let's get to it. Today we're going to be making a planet shader in the Unreal Engine 4. For this project we are going to need a diffuse map of the planet, the clouds, the lights, a spec map, a normal map, and a normal map for the clouds. All textures will be provided in the link below, all except for one, the cloud normal map. For this you have to go into Photoshop with the cloud diffuse, go into filter, 3D, normal bump. For this project we need a sphere with a higher poly count, so you will need to make one in Max, Maya, or Blender. I've created a brand new map and a new material. Once we have our material created, we want to import all of our textures into that material. For this, we are going to need two painters, one for the Earth's surface and the second one for the clouds. What values you set the painters at does not really matter, but I suggest having the panner for the clouds move slightly faster than the planet's surface. Before I apply the material, I want to create up a material instance. This way we can change some parameters around on the fly without having to compile. We want this globe to be able to recognize where the sun is located and make a mask based on that location. So for this, we're going to need a collection parameter. Once we've created our collection parameter, we need a three vector. Once we have that created, we will bring it into our material. We will mask the R, G, and B. After that, we will subtract our result from the mask onto the world position. We will then need a vertex normal and a pixel normal and lerp between the two. We will then plug in both results into a dot product. We will then use a clamp. Without a clamp, this mask will be very, very bright and blinding, so this keeps the value between 1 and 0. And now we have a nice mask between day and night. Currently, it is facing down because it is looking for 0, 0, 0. The way we fix this is we make a blueprint, go into the construction script, and set vector parameter value. We will be setting the value of our sun location based on this actor's location. Now wherever we move the sun actor, our material will recognize that. We are then going to plug our mask into a lerp and then plug our diffuse maps into the B node. And there we are, we have daytime on our planet. Now we have to focus on the night. For this, I'm going to grab the emissive texture. I'm going to multiply that with a three vector parameter called urban color. This is this parameter is going to change the color of the lights on the dark side of the planet. I am then going to plug that result into the A node of the lerp and there we are. We have day and night based on our mask. Now the mask edge is too harsh, harsh for what we want. We want to make that softer. We want it to fade in like a gradient. For that we're going to need a divide and then a scalar parameter that I call dark to light fall off. We are then going to need a power and a scalar parameter I called dark side strength. These two scalar parameters control where the um, where the mask ends and begins, how great or less that fall off is. And then I go into the material instance and mess with the parameters values just a little bit to get the effect that I would like. I keep messing with it until we get the result that I want. Okay, gotta check some things here. There we go, perfect. Now we're getting the results that we want. I then replug in the diffuse and emissive map, and we have a nice fall off. Next we're going to do is the atmosphere. We're going to need a three vector parameter and this is going to be the atmosphere's color. We will then need a Fresnel node and a power. We are going to create a scalar parameter that we will plug into the power and then we will need a, ap a new scalar parameter called atmosphere strength. We will also need a scalar parameter called base reflect. We will then combine the two results and then multiply. I'm going to plug this straight into the emissive map so we can get a good understanding of what's going on. There we go. We have a nice ring around our planet. We only want this to show on the day side. 
So we add this result to our diffuse result and then plug it back into the B lerp. This will give us a nice crest around the day side of our planet. I am now messing with some of the parameters that you see before. I feel free to mess with them as well to get the results you would like. We will then need a new scalar parameter plugged into a multiply. This will control the, the brightness of our atmosphere. I'm going to comment everything out to make sure everything nice, looks nice and neat. Alright, next thing we want to do, the clouds look good, but we want to make them look better. We want a nice shadow underneath the clouds. So to get this, we need a bump offset and two scalar parameters plugged into the bump offset. We also want to make sure we plug in the panner from the clouds into our coordinate of the bump offset. We will then need to duplicate our clouds diffuse texture and plug in the result from the bump offset into the texture sample. This ensures that both the diffuse and the shadow of the clouds are moving together as one. I will then plug this result into a lerp. I will have a normal earth surface go into the A and the cloud color go into the B. I will then add the result of the lerp into the result of our diffuse clouds. And as you can see, we have a very dark cloud. We don't want that necessarily. I'm now messing with some of the scalar parameters to get it nice and close to the Earth's surface so it looks like the clouds are nice and close to the Earth's surface. We're going to need a new lerp. This is going to control the cloud's opacity on the ground. I will plug in the diffuse of the Earth's surface into A and the cloud color into B. Our scalar parameter called cloud opacity will control the fall off between the two. And there we go, we have nice shadows underneath the cloud. Next we will be working on the normal maps. The normal maps are completely optional and it's completely up to you if you would like to use them. I personally like them. They're very straightforward. Just take the two normal maps, plug the earth normal map into the earth surface panner, plug the cloud normal map into the cloud panner, and then add the two to get your result. Just gonna adjust some things real quick to make it look a little bit better. There we go, let's comment that out, keep it all nice and tidy. Next thing we're gonna do is we are going to work on the auroras. For this, we will need a new texture sample. Currently, I just used a simple mask I already had. For this, we are going to need a panner plugged into our mask, and then we will need a new three vector parameter that we will call Aurora Color. We will use a lerp to mask over the colors. We only want this really showing during the night type, so we added it to the urban emissive. This ensures that it's always going to be on the dark side with a little bit of fall off onto the light. That looks okay for now, but we really want it just to be on the northern part of the hemisphere. So for that, we need a bounding box. I'm going to plug this into a power and then make a new scalar parameter. This is going to control the strength of our mask. I'm going to plug that into a missive so we can see exactly what's happening. There we go. That's better. Now we only got in the northern part of our material. I'm going to add everything together and see how it looks. That looks pretty good, but I don't really want the auroras at the very tip of the Earth. I really only want it a little bit south of the North Pole. So for this, we're going to get another bounding box. We're going to use a 1 minus to reverse the mask. I'm going to plug that in to show you exactly what I'm talking about. Now the values are reversed. I'm going to plug that into a lerp and our old result into the A. And let's see how this looks. Okay, not exactly what we wanted. We're going to plug it into the B. That is, I believe, what is correct. We're going to have to pull up a power to really get this into control. And a new scalar parameter. This is to adjust. Uh, this is to adjust the mask. And we're going to plug everything back in. That's much better, but we're going to mess around in the material instance to really get the effect we're going for. We are then going to get a texture coordinate and multiply with a new scalar parameter. This is going to control the scale of our aurora mask. I'm going to plug that result into the coordinate of the panner. I'm going to now mess with the material instance. We're going to have one more scalar parameter for our aurora, and this is going to control the strength of the emissive glow and plug that into our result. And there's the aurora. 
All right, next thing we're going to do is we're going to focus on the specular. We want the sun to reflect off of the oceans and any reflective surface of our planet. I'm going to plug that in really simply. Now I'm going to add a point light to our sun. The point light doesn't really affect the material too much. We just want a nice little reflection off of the ocean. We want to add the top clouds to our spec map. This will ensure that the clouds will also reflect some of the light back to the sun. What we really want is a lerp. We're going to plug the cloud into the alpha of the lerp. We will plug the cloud back into the B, and we will plug the spec map into the A. I'm going to plug this into the emitter so we can see exactly what's going on. There we go. Anything that's a black value will not reflect anything, and we don't want that. We want a little bit of reflection. So what we will do is we will use a clamp and adjust the min value. This ensures that there is nothing that is pure black in their scene. There we go. One thing I almost forgot about the urban lights is we need a lerp. The clouds are going to cover the lights even at night. Plug the urban lights into the B of the lerp and plug that into our result. Let's see how that looks. Next we're going to work on the storms. I only want these storm lights to occur on top of the cloud. So we're going to need another lerp. Plug the clouds back into the alpha once again and plug our new three vector parameter uh, into the B. Now I want the light to actually flash. I just don't want it to be solid. So I'm going to use a time and a sign node and plug that into another lerp. I'm going to plug that into the alpha and the result from our last lerp into the B. I'm going to adjust the time and the sign. You can fiddle with the value, but I just want it to flash. Next, what we want to do is we want to copy another mask. Once again, you should uh, you can use whatever mask type you want. I'm just going to continue to use the mask I used for the auroras for this. This is to ensure that all the clouds are not showing lightning at a constant rate. So I'm going to plug that into another lerp. Plug the, our last reason lerp into the B. And plug that into a missive so we see what's going on. I want to copy our mask again and create a pattern node. You can put the pattern node at whatever value you like. Plug that into another lerp, and then plug that into the emissive so we see what's happening. This ensures that lightning is only happening in a very few areas on our planet at a time. I will then create a new text, texture coordinate and multiply that with a new scalar parameter. This is going to determine how often we see storms on our planet. Plug that into our top mask and comment this out as storms. I'm then going to add the result of the storm to our lerp result. This is because we want storms happening on both day and night. And plug that in. Go ahead and open up your material instance and mess with some of the values until you get an effect that you